and just kind of clean up some things from the uh, first two practices, first two live segments rather. Um, and just take that opportunity to just, you know, look at us, not worry about anybody else. It's things we can kind of do that uh, we talked about and didn't have carryover or just, you know, other things we can expound on without having to put the mileage on our legs. So uh, I, th I thought that was segment was good. And there was a lot of Q and A so that the guys are receptive and um, trying to get better. And then uh, got up and down a little bit, a lot of shooting, a lot of script and uh, just one live uh, segment this morning. When you're in the teaching segment of practice, how do you deal with correct something? I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I think it's, you make the point, it's not personal. Um, and you could go through, and I always joke, uh, you know, we don't pick the clips, you do. <laughs> so it's just, uh, these are mistakes that we, we don't want to repeat. Uh, they're teaching clips. It's not that, like we're calling anyone out. It, uh, you could easily pick three or four of the same thing with different people involved. So uh, you just happen to be in this particular instance. So uh, I think guys at this point, they know that uh, we're just all trying to get better. It, it's nothing personal and it's just more, hey, let's let's figure this out. Let's talk about it. Make sure we have a clean understanding. Mr. Leontis was at practice today. What were some things you might have addressed with the players? Well, he just made the point, you know, how we only not only represent ourselves, we represent the organization, the city. Um, it, it's incumbent upon us to take that seriously, that uh, we have to be ambassadors of the game, um, get out in the community, um, and re-engage to some degree. And obviously, you know, a lot of that is with winning, but it's also about, you know, bringing the right people together, people with character and integrity, um, that they're, they're going to uphold the brand. So it's important to him. I think we've done a good job of, of trying to surround ourselves with, with those type of people. And obviously, I think, you know, what we've started will continue, and hopefully that translates into wins. Lexi, sound like an NFL coach upholding the brand. Like <laughs> Protect the shield. Um, Coons the other day said something to us that I, as a someone who does not watch film all the time, didn't quite understand. But he said he learned like a really smart way to watch film. Something we talked about with Rajon Rondo for a long time. What's the difference between a smart way of watching film or a really efficient way of watching film and just kind of like letting it wash over you? Well, I think the processing. Um, you can see something three or four times, um, and you still missed the point. So I think that's part of you know your point. Chris, of when you watch film, really slowing it down. Because I think at times the game moves quickly. And it's easy for us as coaches to stop, rewind, stop, rewind, um, and make finite points. Well, the game, it's moving fast. So you want to get guys to the point where they're not thinking, they're reacting. So understanding the situation, understanding our rules when it pertains to those type of situations, that takes a lot of the thought process out. But when it comes to the film, I think you really have to slow down and understand what are we looking for? What are we teaching? What are we trying to get out of that particular clip? That was kind of one of the things he said he learned from the best teams with in LA. Can you, when guys like KCP and Coop have, you know, one league titles and things like that, can you tell the things that they can then bring to the team? Like, does mm -hmm. that actually make a difference just knowing what it takes to get to the end of a long season and still be winning that far down the line? Well, you know, they can impart some of that along the way. I think it really uh, holds fast when you start getting into into the postseason because we all know that preseason is different than the regular season, regular season is different than playoffs. Um, and not having gone through any of that for some of our guys, and even for me as a head coach, it's, it's going to be different. So it's not necessarily how you prepare, but how do you cope with some of those moments? And I think that's, that's something that they, they can help us because uh, they've been there, they've done it. I think, you know, the other part, being seasoned vets, they pick things up. And a lot of times things will happen in the scrimmages, they'll happen in the drills, that we haven't talked about, but they already know, you know, the coverage. They might not know the, the call or the command. They have a grasp of some of the different coverages that we haven't even touched yet. And that's just guys being around. They've been with other teams. They've been exposed. I'm uh, conscious of asking you too many questions about your last stop, but um, I hadn't realized how good you guys were at pick and roll defense to Denver, number one in the league points per possession. How were you guys so good at it? And, you know, what could be applied to it? Just the constant repetition. Um, as you see the way that the game is played, it's, you know, without knowing the, the real numbers, it, I'd probably say there's 50 plus pick and rolls per, per game. So it's a lot. And, you know, the, just being constant in our communication, constant repetition in the muscle memory, 
So guys are just, they're in concert. They see the action, they process it. Everyone knows their responsibility in that play. Uh, the more you can do that, I think, once again, takes the thinking out. And now they're just flying around, they're reacting. Um, and it took, a, it took us a lot of time in, you know, in my previous spot that it didn't come right away. Uh, and I'm trying to hopefully bring that ideology along where it's going to take some time, but every day, this is going to be something that we really have to concentrate on. When you saw Denny Avdia doing three on three drills, uh, playing a lot of defense, mm -hmm. was there anything new today or is it just kind of incremental steps moving forward? Pretty much incremental. Um, you know, every day gives him a, a larger window of practice. So that's good to see how he responds. Um, but once again, just like a lot of young players, they need reps. So it, it's good for him at times to get reps before, reps after. Those small groups, small sided games, those are just other opportunities for him to uh, get his legs under. And um, as a new head coach, uh, do you have anything planned in training camp to like keep it light or like something surprise or like something <laughs> in terms of team chemistry? Do you feel like it, like if there's an importance in that, that like you have to have things planned? I think you do. Um, it's tough to do that in camp, especially in your home market, just because, you know, these guys, are their time's valuable and it's a long season. We don't want to monopolize that while we're here. There are times throughout the season where you do, you know, fun things off the floor where it's, they think it's going to be a practice. You take them off site to do something different. Uh, there are opportunities to do, to do that. But, uh, you know, right now I think everyone's locked in to, you know, really being mindful of our time, being efficient in how we work and really laying this foundation so we can get off to a good start. All right, we'll go over to Neil on Zoom. Coach, um, you know, you touched on it that, you know, you want to improve the team's pick and roll defense. You want them to, you know, maybe not switch as much. In past years, you know, the same things have been said. You know, you got to guard your man. You got to take pride in it. How do you hope that, you know, is it your philosophy or just having better talent? How do you think that it will actually be executed with you guys this year? I think the biggest thing is accountability. And it's, it's one thing to come from us, but uh, the player to player accountability where, you know, all five are on the same page. So when there is a breakdown, you know, instantly all five should know and understand what happened or what didn't happen, who's responsible. Um, and it's not about, you know, pointing fingers or this, that, and the other, but they got to be able to hold each other accountable. Uh, and I think with that, that builds trust. Um, there's that level of communication. And uh, I think that that makes us better. And Tommy spoke on that uh, last week that, you know, there's some more self-policing that he's seen, you know, in some of the early runs before training camp. Have you seen that as well? And how have you seen that maybe even improved during the course of training camp? This book goes back to us learning each other. And, you know, once we build that, you know, rapport, I, you know, I think it's, it's great the fact that those guys can police each other, police the locker room. So it's, it's not always on us to have to make sure we're, we're on time or doing the right thing or even if we're doing the right coverage. Um, guys can take it upon themselves, uh, and that just shows growth. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Last question, Chris Hills. Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. Speaking about Corey Kispert, what impressed you most about his attitude in the team, and what's your plan about his, uh, his rookie season? Well, I think that's kind of up in the air. I mean, you know, Corey's going to have opportunities, no doubt. Um, the best part about it is, you know, to see where he was through summer league, to see where he is now. Um, he's a better player. And I think uh, the game is starting to slow down for him. Uh, he's starting to process some of the things, ways he can be more effective on and off the ball. Um, I think his size is something that we didn't necessarily take, a, take advantage of in, in summer league. And I think he's going to get better as a secondary playmaker, ball handler. Um, he's going to garner a lot of attention because teams are going to, read him as a shooter, but, you know, seeing him play off the bounce, move off the ball as a cutter, uh, that, that orchestrates a lot of help and it helps free up, you know, some of the other guys on the floor. We saw uh, team chairman Ted Lance out there uh, addressing the team. Uh, just kind of what were your impressions of and what are you saying? Um, you know, Ted's a great man. He's, um, you know, I've had a chance to have a, a conversation with him prior to him coming up this way. And uh, he's a very bright, intelligent man that, um, you know, obviously business aside, he wants uh, the Wizards to do well. You know, he, he always talks about, you know, how the Mystics are winning uh, championships, um, you know, the 2K League winning championships. And, you know, he, he, he really, really wants the Wizards to, um, 
you know, make that kind of push and that kind of type of trajectory. So uh, you, you could tell he's a, a owner that really cares. I want to ask you about rebounding. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was not really a strength like two years ago for this team, but then they had uh, obviously lost Wes, which is pretty good ahead. Mm -hmm. But now he's gone. I I'm just I'm wondering from your perspective, like what are going to be the priorities for you guys rebound as well to make sure that it can be straight? Um, I mean, rebound is all about effort. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, to win basketball games in this league, uh, regular season and playoffs, you got to be able to defend and, um, you know, you know, ending on defense is, is always rebounding. So if you can always, if you, if you can find a way to defend and rebound, you're going to put yourself, uh, uh, you know, in position and to have opportunities to win ball games. And, you know, it's all about effort. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, me being here, it's going to help out. You know, last year I was probably one of the better offensive rebounding uh, wings in the league. And um, that's a big priority for me. You know, it's a big part of my game. It helps me get going. So, um, you know, I'll definitely be, you know, challenging a lot of guys to you know get in there because it's important. Because if we can stop guys to, you know, and limit them to one possession, um, possession after possession, it's going to bode well for us offensively. So, you talked on media day about watching film and when you first started like really getting into that stuff and you mm. mentioned that it's like you, something you admired early in your career is the way that Rondo watched film. What is that? What's like a good way to watch it? What do you mean by that? I, I don't watch film, so I don't know what you're talking about there. Um, you know, I, I just think there's layers to watching film. Um, you know, I, I think that the first layer of film is obviously you're watching yourself and you're watching yourself, your movements the whole time. And then, um, you know, secondly, I'm, and I'm talking from an offensive standpoint right now. And, you know, it, it goes into defensively. But um, then, then you start watching, you know, the weak side. And, and, then, and then you're watching, like, you know, what the team is doing, where the low man is on the court, um, you know, where the help is supposed to be, where that rotation is supposed to be. And, um, <clears throat> you know, that's one thing that really opened up with Rondo was I caught myself in that first layer a lot just watching myself. But, you know, the real answer to the test is, you know, off ball weak, uh, weak side, because, uh, you know, that's always the secondary side. And a lot of times that's the side of the floor that, uh, you know, kind of matters most because if guys aren't connected on that side, you know, it's easy layups, it's offensive rebound opportunities and uh, so on and so forth. So, um, you know, just looking at the whole floor, you know, looking at little things, obviously, you know, uh, another thing, for instance, you know, a lot of times, when it's a pick and roll coming, you know, you, you tend to always look at just the two men that are in the pick and roll. But, um, you know, looking at that weak side is just important because it, it'll help you learn the game while you're playing too, so. Um, and both you and Casey Gay have talked about having obviously the championship experience, knowing what it takes to kind of last that long. Are there things from that experience that you, you guys can apply right now in training camp or does that show up more in postseason when your legs are tired, when you're, you know, in that kind of part of the uh, no, it shows up every single day. Um, it showed up, you know, September 8th when we got here. Um, you know, having having a championship attitude and mentality is, you know, obviously it is during that time of the season, obviously, but it's the little things. You know, you're not just a champion um, overnight and er everything really happens um, with a process and step by step, you know, and that, that starts with coming in, leading, um, holding guys accountable. Um, you know, coming in and make sure you take care of your body, uh, making sure you lift every day, making sure um, you're putting extra work before and after practice. And those, those type of things, that's what makes a champion and, and makes you have that type of mentality. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, we've done a pretty good job of, you know, just coming in and being ourselves because, you know, that's, that's who we are. You know, it's, it's ingrained in us now. And, um, you know, that's how kind of me and Pope, you know, really approach the game of basketball. And, um, you know, it's been great. It's been great. We've had a great competitive uh, practices. Everyone's really dialed in. And uh, you can tell, you know, we got a certain type of pop in the gym. So. I'm also wondering if you have a favorite tattoo. Uh, favorite tattoo? Um, yeah, I'm working on my back right now. I got this one um, it's a big mountain range. So i got like 10 more hours to go. But, yeah, it's going to be <laughs> – it's going to be a minute. You do some of them yourself, right? Um, like, I'll sketch them out first and then, like, kind of, like, give person, uh, you know, what I kind of want, the vibe. But, you know, obviously they take it from there, though. That's so, cool. Yeah. <laughs>
Hey Kyle, um, on media day you talked about the influence Anthony Davis has had on your defense. Yeah. But what are some specific things that you were able to take away that you looked like the game? Uh, I think the biggest thing is, you know, with him, <clears throat> uh, I'll take it back. You know, I think, uh, you know, before I started improving defensively, I was terrible with using my length. Um, and, you know, just watching him every single day, uh, that's the number one thing that always stands out with him. You know, uh, he has good feet. You know, he's pretty mobile for a big, but he understands and knows his body and understands, you know, he knows how to use his length on the court. So, you know, obviously, um, you know, having a stick hand high or also knowing your personnel, being able to close out a certain guy, give a guy an angle, um, and use your link at the rim, um, always being in the right spot off the, uh, defensively, uh, you know, whether that's getting charges, altering shots, um, or even blocking shots. So, uh, you know, he was a big part of, you know, really helping me develop defensively. Uh, and, and not so much talking to me, but, you know, just from just watching him every single day um, and, and how he led in that regard. So, Kyle, you've been around a lot of shot blockers. What is Gafford's ceiling? I mean, he's got a chance. He's got a chance. Um, he's a young player, uh, very, very much like a pogo stick, you know, someone that can just get up. Uh, and he reminds me a lot of, um, someone athletically like JaVale McGee and how uh, every single time, you know, we would get beat defensively and we just knew JaVale was back there, you know, either to block a shot or to alter it. And, you know, that's huge. That's a huge presence. And, you know, I think the next step for him is um, is really playing mind games with, the, uh, with offensive players when they're approaching the rim. Um, you know, I think when you're a, a pogo stick type of athlete, you, you want to block everything because, you know, um, that's your athletic ability and, you know, you're confident in that. But, um, you know, not every time calls for getting blocks, you know, because a lot of times if you have that type of DNA, uh, offensive players are smart and they'll try to, you know, jump into you or, uh, you know, pump fake. And, uh, you know, with him, he's, he's a very inquisitive person. You know, he wants to learn and um, he receives uh, criticism really, really, really well. And uh, he takes it in and, um, you know, he, he's got the sky's the limit for him, for sure. Is there a, someone that you competed against and now that they're your teammate that has kind of surprised you about how they get down in, in the practice environment? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, just really everybody, because you, you, you don't really know, you know, what type of guy someone is, you know, on the court when they're playing basketball, because you know, when the game comes on, everybody's going hard. But, um, you know, just seeing everyone's work habits and, you know, I've been really impressed and surprised by, you know, everybody because everyone comes in and they, um, you know, they have the itch to work and improve their games. And, you know, everybody has a certain type of laser like focus and practice to improve and, and listen to coaches. And, um, you know, I think just the best part about this team so far is, um, you know, it's no, it's no real egos, you know, and every, everyone's cool. Everyone, you know, if I got something to say to somebody, they're going to take it. If I'm not doing my job, you know, you can say something to me too. And, you know, that's the best type of environment to be around because at the end of the day, everyone's trying to win. Um, and, you know, in order to win, you got to have that type of mentality to where, you know, you're coming in, you're working, uh, you have great habits and, um, Everyone can be held accountable by themselves, but uh, other people. All right, we'll take a couple on Zoom. Neil? Hey, Kyle. Uh, first off, is the mountain range, uh, like actual mountain range that you're going off of, or just a sketch? Um, it's, um, it's like an imaginary mountain range. Gotcha. I mean, it was kind of tough to, because the placement of it on my back, you know, it's kind of tough to really find one that looks like that but um <laughs> you know looks good gotcha um yeah. and, and second you know i figure you guys haven't necessarily talked about your role you know whether it's gonna be starting or off the bench you've had experience with both so far in your career how do you change your mentality if at all coming off the bench or starting um well i'm, I'm not really sure about all that but you know i know for me um 
you know, I've done a great job in these practices of just, you know, just being a leader, um, coming in, working my tail off and, um, you know, really just showing my versatility, you know, not just being a scorer, but, you know, just doing a little bit of everything, you know, defending guys, you know, uh, whether it's one, two, three, fours, and then also uh, other end scoring, but, you know, playmaking as well. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to having a real successful season. So appreciate it. Yeah. Hey Kyle, hope you are doing well. What did you learn so far playing alongside the Bradley Bill? Um, you know, it's just uh, you know every day I learn something new. Uh, learn something new about him. Um, you know, obviously, you know I watch a lot of basketball. I watch a lot of guys in this league, and I've watched him for you know multiple years and, and the way he plays. But you know, every single day, you know, you find out something more about him. Um, you know, finding out that. You know, he, he's a pretty good passer. Um, you know, he, he, he's he's looking that way. And, um, you know, obviously when you got a guy that scores 30 points every night, um, you know, from the outside looking in, you know, you're thinking that, you know, it's not really a willing passer and not this, but, you know, he makes the right play. And uh, that's very important to, for winning basketball. And, um, you know, you know, for guys that can, and I, and I see it all the time, especially playing with Brown and AD, um, if they wanted to, they could come down to court and score every single time if they wanted to. Um, but understanding your teammates and realizing that, you know, whatever the right play is in front of you, um, you know, that's the most important thing. And uh, he does that. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's really encouraging and it helps the whole team. So. And also, what result will make you satisfied at the end of the season? So, uh, say one more time. What result will make you satisfied at the end of the season? What result? Um, you know, it's a building block. Um, every day you got to build. And, um, you know, uh, Jason Kidd used to always say, um, you know, the regular season, every day, every game, every practice, it's all a rehearsal for the playoffs. So you know, if we can kind of have that type of mentality that, you know, every day we're getting better, we're trying to see what works, what doesn't work play to our strengths, not to our weaknesses. And we can build on those type of things, you know, by, you know, after all-star break, we get clicking at the right time. Um, you know, that's the most important thing. And then we let the chips fall where they do. Corey, how have you just kind of just navigated, you know, three days of training camp? Uh, I kind of laugh because you played so much basketball, but this is like the level you've always wanted to get to. So has the, the dream of playing NBA kind of lived up to it so far during camp. Yeah, I mean, yes, it has. Um, it's asking a lot of questions. It's being a student. It's watching first. It's, um, you know, all that stuff before you out there and, and do it. You know, you don't want to be the guy to, uh, to mess things up. You want to make sure that things are clear before you go in there. And um, thankfully, you know, guys like Brad and Spencer and, and Trez and, and Kuz have been really vocal with me about where they want to see me on the floor, what, what you know, what's open and, what I can do. And, um, I feel really confident. I feel clear headed, um, on the floor and I'm in a really good spot. Um, you know, thanks to the guys out there. They're making it really easy. So I always ask rookies that have experienced summer league, what was it like when it was over with? And then when you get to camp, were you like, Whoa, that was different than Vegas and Vegas was different than college. Have you noticed like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, really good. yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's different. Like, well, well, part, it's part of the same part different, you know, coach, um, on, coach West was with us at summer league and he ran every practice and he, you know, like basically put in our offensive system in, in summer league. So I had a little bit of a head start coming here and everything I'm seeing as far as the offensive system goes is review. But with that being said, yeah, Spencer and Brad weren't handling the ball in summer league. So um, that's the adjustment is to get used to those that, that ca like caliber of player. Um, and honestly, it, it makes my job a lot easier too playing off those guys. You know, that's, that's what I wanted when I came here. That's what I was so excited about um, is because they make a guy, they make a job and they, they make my job really easy with how good they are. Um, we're figuring it out. Yeah. Well, we'll make sure to let it know, let, let you guys have, let you guys know when it happens. Hey, Corey, uh, I must ask about your Mariners hat then. Um, who are your favorite uh, all-time Mariners and 
or Ichiro and or Yusei Kikuchi on that? <laughs> um, I would say my all-time favorite, although I wasn't, um, I was a toddler when he was playing was Ken Griffey. Um, but yes, Ichiro was a very big part of my childhood. Um, Yusei Kikuchi, a little bit less. I mean, he's kind of been in and out injuries and stuff like that, but he's been, um, he's been great for our starting rotation, but yeah, Ichiro, um, he, he, I'm really happy that he, you know, stuck around through some pretty dark days in Seattle because he, he made it, um, he made it a bright spot coming to those games. It was a lot of fun to watch him play. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So um, my mom was out here for a few days, um, just kind of helping me move in when I first got here. And um, thank the Lord, because she's a, uh, a, a, long, a while ago, she spent probably five or seven years as an interior designer professionally. So yeah, I mean, I literally, she like had my style like pinned down and she's like, Corey, I'm going to get this couch for you, this bed, this bed frame, this, you know, this wall stuff for you. And she like, laid out this like beautiful apartment for me. And um, all I had to do was say yes. And um, she, I felt like I was on like, like a real life character on HGTV because she just made my apartment look so good. Um, so she's been great. And then my parents will be out here um, during the preseason for a little bit. And then at the end of October. Have you had a chance to get any free time yet? Like do you, do you make time in the day to make sure like, okay, I need to clear my mind to relax or I don't want to do any of that stuff? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, thankfully our practices are kind of in the middle of the day. Um, they were done by, you know, two. So plenty of sunlight left to um, kind of explore and do all that stuff. Um, I play a lot of golf. So I've been, I've been doing that a little bit, um, getting out to courses and driving ranges and stuff and trying to stay sharp there. Um, and I'm actually still in the master's program at Gonzaga. So kind of doing a little bit of, doing a little bit of homework still. MBA, yeah, business. <laughs> I just, I just remember like reading all the stories about how you're like Mr. Perfect or whatever. I'm like, okay, this is all falling. Out. Yeah, not even close. Not even close. I still hate doing homework, but I'm, I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, I also wanted to ask you what type of communicator Spencer is. Um, yeah. Like, he's, he's obviously a little low-key. Like he's still learning you guys, but what's it like when he's talking to you? Like yeah, he commands a lot of respect from a lot of people. It's clear that he's seen, you know, every sort of every sort of defense, and um, he also is really articulate. Like you know, he he says exactly what he means, and there's no confusion about um, what he means or where he wants you to be, and you know, looks you in the eye and is really intense about it. And um, there's a lot of respect for somebody like that, um, someone who can have a clear conversation with you and isn't afraid of conflict if, or confrontation and when it's needed. Um, he's a really good leader from what I've seen so far. Going back to the uh, NBA talent level and being around it kind of for the first time, yeah. uh, what has kind of stood out to you the most? Is it the, the size, the athleticism, the, the shooting? Is there something that has been like, wow, this is, this is the NBA? Yeah, well, I would probably say that, you know, like there's no – you don't get a break. Like, I mean, every single guy on the floor is on the floor for a reason. You know, in, in, in college there were, you know, certain people that got on the floor that you'd kind of like, you know, sag way off of, couldn't shoot, couldn't like, you know – um, but in the NBA, that's just not the case, you know, no matter who you're guarding, especially on this floor with all this talent, like you have to be on hundred percent of the time. So, you know, the speed is, I feel like I've gotten used to the speed and the athleticism and the size, and I played against some really good athletes in college and this is, this is better, but you know, I'm, I'm, it takes a little bit, it takes, you know, a little less for that. But for me, it's, um, just exactly like how talented every single person on the floor is like, there's no dip, no matter, you know, one to 15. And obviously, a lot of people talk about your shooting, but um, you also get a lot of praise for your ability as a cutter. Mm -hmm. um, kind of how did that develop for you, and, and, and why do you think people praise you as a cutter? What, what are kind of your priorities? In that yeah, that, that really kind of – I molded that part of my game last year. Um, we were a very, like, spatially aware team at Gonzaga. We knew exactly where everybody was on the floor, uh, when to cut, how to cut, the timing of it. We gelled so well as a team that um, – you know, cutting was a huge part of our offense and is a huge part of the way that I scored points. So, um, you know, the space is more, the, there's more space in the NBA and there's more gaps to cut in. And, um, you know, guys, like I've, I've talked with guys like Brad and Aaron and Spencer, they know I'm going to cut and they know I'm going to be there. So um, they got their heads up looking for it. And 
Um, it's just another wrinkle we can add. In terms of learning uh, chemistry with your teammates, it, I would imagine cutting, there's a, a, there's a degree of difficulty, or at least it takes some time so you don't run into other players, mm -hmm. right? Uh, kind of what, where's that, what was that like at Summer League, and what is that like now, just kind of like trying to build that chemistry with the cutter? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's definitely been some moments where I feel like I'm on top of guys, or I'm taking, taking away space from guys, and, you know, I'm learning as much as they are. So they're learning about me, and I'm learning about them. So um, it's just a patience thing, just waiting it out, and um, ironing out the kinks and you know we'll be there we'll be there soon enough but um, yeah definitely won't stop cutting and definitely won't stop you know trying to get in the mix and get my nose in there. Um, one more um, I did meet your mom she's a very nice lady but did you uh, did you feel like you could veto or did you veto any of her design? Decisions? Yeah you know I did veto some design decisions um, yeah I did um, but you know part of why she was such a good interior designer is that she has like a read on people like she has this gift that if you spend five minutes with her, she can like, you know, I think you'll like this in your living room and, you know, the, this accent color and whatever, whatever, this is kind of your, like your style. And she's been around me for 18 years. And so she's got it nailed down pretty good. Um, but ultimately I'm the one swiping the credit card. So I got the final, <laughs> the final veto power. Hi, right, Corey, we're going to transition to Zoom for questions. Christos. Hello, Corey. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What was the biggest adjustment that you made in those uh, those days in the training camp so far? How, did you ask what biggest adjustments? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, I kind of mentioned it earlier, just getting to know the players on the team. You know, I haven't played a lot of minutes yet and don't have a lot of experience with the guys on the floor. So uh, making sure I can get in every rep I can and ask questions and be a student on the floor probably is the biggest adjustment, you know, over – the speed or the athleticism or um, anything else, really. And also you have teammates like Bradley Beal, Kal Kuzma, Montrez Harrell. How important uh, about your growth as a player is this uh, situation and what do you expect to learn from them this season? Well, yeah, it's been great. I expect to learn a lot, um, especially from those guys that are coming from the Lakers. Um, you know, they've won rings and they've been at the highest level. They know what it takes to play there. So, you know, us as an organization, want to get to that point in the worst way so uh, we're gonna you know understand we're, we're gonna work off of the way that they you know got to that got to that point and you know we're gonna try to make a make a run at this year too